Thank you for watching this special video of the Greater Bible League Temple of Albion Evangelism Seminar taught by Evangelist Vita Hopkins with words from her husband, Elder James Hopkins. Don't forget to visit our website, www.gbwtalbion.org, for upcoming events like the third annual Pastoral Anniversary Celebration on April 13th and 15th. Thank you and stay blessed. If it wasn't for the Lord, his new mercies this morning, his grace that is so sufficient. We thank him because it's his love and his blood. If it had not been for the Lord, we wouldn't even be here. Amen. So we give him praise and we give him honor and we give him glory. It is he that do the works. It's not us. Amen. It is he that lead us and guide us. And we thank him for being such an awesome and mindful, wonderful. The scriptures say wonderful counselor, the mighty God. The everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Don't you thank him for being so yes. good? He's just a good God. Even on our worst days, even on our, I'm talking about, you ever had a bad day? Amen. Even on your bad day, he's a good God. Amen. 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 On your worst day, somebody think about your worst day. Anybody had, I'm talking about, you ever had a worst day in your life? Even on that day, he was still good. And even today. He's still good. So we just bless him. Amen. Yes. Even with everything that's going on, even with the madness in the world, even with all the craziness, mm -hmm. do you know God has a plan? Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's trying to get our attention. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Do you hear me? He's trying to get our attention, especially the church. Amen. It's time for the church to quit playing church and really be the church of the living God. Yes. So we thank God, and I thank God for my husband. I thank God for him. We'll be celebrating 37 years wow. in September. Amen. So, you know, God is good, amen? 37 <laughs> years, amen. amen? Never skipped a beat, never missed a beat, never, walk, never uh, walked away, never threw the test in the trousers. God kept us together because he was the main ingredient, still the main ingredient in our marriage. Mm -hmm. So I thank God for my husband, amen. I thank God for him. And our bishop in his absence, Bishop Harper, who gave yeah. us permission to come today. Mm -hmm. So we thank God for him and our first lady. And I thank God for you, first lady. If you have your handouts, we're just gonna, we're gonna try to follow this word, almost scripture by scripture. If we don't, that's okay. Yeah. But we just wanna give a little bit what is, what somebody said, what is true evangelism? What is true evangelism? Somebody give me a definition. What is true evangelism? What's true evangelism? Okay. Spreading the gospel. Spreading the gospel. Mm -hmm. Spread the truth. What is evangelism? The spreading of the Christian gospel by public preaching or personal witness, zealous advocacy of the cause. Tell the person next to you, we should not be people-minded, but soul-minded. We should not be people-minded, but soul-minded. Soul 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 because it's not the people, it's the people with a soul. So a lot of times we look at the person, but guess what God is looking at? He's looking at the soul. He's looking at the heart. Even though we're people, but God is looking at, beyond that, saving the soul. A lot of times I tell, when I go through my ears, I say, ooh, I smell souls. <laughs> Amen. Amen. My husband tell you, he hates, sometimes he don't even like to go to Myers because I hug everybody, everybody talking. But guess what that does? God is drawing the soul. So we have to be, it's not about people. It's about that soul. And a lot of times when that person is coming to you and want to talk to you, guess what? God is drawing that soul. That person who has a soul. And that's what God is looking at. And that's what we have to always have to be soul-minded. And it's always a spirit that's operating. But guess what? A lot of times that person is crying out when they keep coming to you. They really cry out. They can't stand you. They don't want to talk to you. Next thing you know, here they come and they want you to pray for them. They talk about you, they dog you out, they don't like you, but let them get in the situation, especially Amen. if you're holding up that light. Amen. 
And they know they dogging you out, but you're not dogging them out. They know they cussing, but you're not cussing. Mm -hmm. Guess what they end up doing? <laughs> I'm going through something. Yeah. They take you in the corner. Mm -hmm. Will you pray for me? Mm -hmm. That's evangelism. And sometimes it's not so it's not even what you say. That doesn't, that's not what you say all the time to win souls. It's what you do. And it's what you don't do that wins souls. I want to just testify real quick before I forget. Um, Pastor Kevin know about this. My husband and I, we went to men's warehouse uh, to look for a suit for Father's Day. And the sign said clothes as we were going up. And so he turned around. He said they, they closed because he don't even like the shop. So he like, I'm so glad they closed. <laughs> And so the man on the inside, he was like, come on in, come on in. And my husband said, they close. I said, James, the man said, come on in. He said, the side said, close. I said, the man said, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> so we go in, and we start talking to the man. And it was 9, it was nine o'clock. And so 10 o'clock, we still didn't find a suit. So he asked us, he said, well, what are you looking for a suit for? We said, for church. He said, church? He said, I'm, I'm, I'm Catholic. I'm. He said, well, my wife went to this church. And she said, the mother's laid hands on her. She got the Holy Ghost, something like that. Started speaking in tongues. Guess what I heard? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I said, James, you got your Bible? He said, no. He said, you got your Bible? I'm like, no, I don't have a Bible. Now, we started talking about his wife experienced how they laid hands on him, the mothers laid hands on him, and she started speaking in tongues. So as he was talking, God said, I'm about to turn the men's warehouse into a prayer house. So now it's 1030, we still haven't found the suit, and we just talking about the Lord, and what now, we didn't forget that we was looking for a suit almost, because he wanted to know what we believe, what we talking about. So at here comes his wife, who just received the Holy Ghost that Wednesday. This was on a Thursday, Friday, wasn't it, James? And she had just received the Holy Ghost. And here she comes. You know how when you first get the Holy Ghost, you're like, ah! She was radiant with the anointing of God. And she walked in. And I'm like, oh, my God. And she started, her and I went our way, and they were all on another side. So I, her name was Mar her name was Marnie. And I said, what happened to you, Marnie? She said, I was at this church. And she said, these mothers laid hands on me. And she said, I started speaking in tongues. Now, they over there looking for a suit. It's, it's what, 10.30 maybe? Almost 11 o'clock. So the, the kids was outside playing. But they had closed the store. And the, the other people said, uh, they said, Tony, we're going to lock up. You okay? He said, I'm in good hands. When he said that, you know what that was, right? He said, I'm in good hands. Now, we still clueless as to what's about to take place. So, anyway, so her and I talking, the kids outside playing. So they come back in because we done found the suit. And her son walks in. He said, something feels different in this store. He a kid. He said, something feels different. So, I said, James, we got to pray. Now, we in a men's warehouse, a clothing store, where they sell soups and men's soups only. So, we got in a circle and began to pray. My husband walked up to Tony. That's his name. We didn't even know he was the manager of the store because we never seen him. He walked up to him. He said, Tony! He said, God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And he fell down, bam, on the floor. And do you know what God did? He started speaking in tongues, felt them with, and those price tags, he was under the suits, and the price tags were just going, eat. and he was just speaking in tongues. And his wife, I turned to her, I said, Marty, I said, you want to be baptized in Jesus' name? She said, I told the Lord I want to be baptized. At midnight, they both went down in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what God will do. Hallelujah. My brother was at our house. He had a headache. And God says, just a distraction. And as he was his head, you could see he had a migraine. And you, anybody ever had a migraine? And you could see the thumping in his head. 
right here on his forehead. You can see the thumping. God said it's just a distraction because he wanted to get the Holy Ghost. He got filled with the Holy Ghost at the house. And again at midnight, his wife was with him. She wasn't planning on getting baptized. But she got baptized with him and she came up speaking in tongues. You can't tell me what God told about evangelism. Hallelujah. Just October the 29th, our grandson who was in church, he's 10, when well, he's 11, he was 10, got filled with the Holy Ghost at church. You talking about it is time to evangelize, be real, let it come from the heart, and God will use your hands and your feet and your mouth to teach and preach and tell somebody the good news. How many want to be one of them? How many want to see the world turned upside down, change things, and the atmosphere, and be a, be a vessel Amen. for God? Amen. Because it is all about souls, y'all. Make no mistake, Jesus died for the people, for souls to be saved. So we're going to go into it. So evangelism is it's advocacy, advocacy, advocacy of the cause. And that means one that defends or maintains a cause or proposal, someone who supports the gospel. How many defend the gospel? How many maintain the word of God? How many uphold the word of God? How many walk in the word of God? How many believe the word of God? How many are advocate for the word of God? You don't really have to defend the word. Just stand on the word. Amen. Preach the word. You don't have to debate about the word because the word will stand on itself. Amen. You don't have to get in a debate with anybody about the word. Just say what God says and then God will deal with them and debate the word with them. Amen. Amen. So, he said unto his disciples, the harvest is truly pleased for what? The laborers of the it says, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labors into his harvest. So we want to go down and read this acronyms. And we want to read it together starting with E. What is E? Encourage. Encourage. Establish. V. Victory. A. Abundant. Accept. Admonish. Appointed. Awesome. In name, name nations, necessary. G. Gain, generation, good work. E. Eternal life, everyone, experience. Okay, let's stop right there. Is evangelism for everyone? Yes. Should everyone experience some form of evangelism if you're on this side? Yes. A. Love, 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 love. Should we as the people of God, should we show forth the love of God? Yes. Should we love those who don't even love us? Yes. Should we show forth the love, I'm talking about the genuine love of God, even when they can't stand you? Ah. S. Salvation saves souls. M. Minister, mission, message, miracle. Do you know it's a miracle when you get filled with the Holy Ghost? Do you really realize how many got the Holy Ghost? How many speak in tongues? How many speak in tongues? How many got the Holy Ghost? Do you know really it's a miracle when you get filled with the Holy Ghost? God is just, the pages have just come off, the word has just come off the page in the book of Acts and just leaked in your spirit, you got filled with the Holy Ghost. You became a walking miracle. God knows what he's doing. Yes. Just let him do whatever he wants to do with you, whatever he chooses to do. And sometimes it ain't pretty what he wants to do. Sometimes you don't understand what he wants to do, but it's always about somebody else. So minister, mission. Now, we're going to take these acronyms. And we want to tie every one of these into the scripture. Amen. As we go into the next page, these are found. Every word almost is found in these scriptures. It's like uh, connecting the dots. So, in encourage or establish, we have a scripture here. With the abundant, acceptable, we have a scripture. 
So you have to pay attention. And even if you know a scripture that's not in this second page, see if you can find one that relates to these words. Amen? Mm -hmm. So anyone that gets it, we're going to read the scripture. And if you see the word in the scripture, raise your hand and you get a little blessing. We couldn't have been the dots. We must know we're on page two of our handout. The first thing, we must know who Jesus is. Jesus is not Allah. He's not Muhammad. He's not Jehovah. That they call him a Jehovah Witness. They don't call him God. He's not Buddha. Who do you say Jesus is? Who do you say Jesus is? Who do you say? God. God. Who do you say Jesus is? God. Who do you say Jesus is? God. Who do you say Jesus is? 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 Elder Hopkins? He's God. Who do you say? God. He's God. So let's go to the scripture. St. Matthew 16, 13, and 18. Let's go to that scripture. And also we want to go to St. John 1, the 14. Let's go to St. Matthew 16. If you have it, say amen. 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 All right. Let me get it. <laughs> amen. Let's go 16, verse 13 to 18. And when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that the Son of Man am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, He asked them a question, but wait a minute, that's what they say. You know, a lot of people say a lot of things about who God is, who Jesus is. I call some of them like a Jesus uses, but they don't really know who he is. They just use the name, but they don't really know who he is. You see it on TV. People say Jesus all the time, but they don't really know who he is because they don't really have a relationship with him. But everybody used the name. But he said, who do you, who do you, do you know who I am? Not everybody. You can't get mad at people that they really don't know who he is because it comes by revelation who he yeah. is. Amen. So here in verse, verse 16, and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thy Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Do you know it comes by revelation that God has to reveal who he is to you? But before you better know who he is, because if you're going out witness evangelism, you're going to run across a whole lot of different things, some strange things. Even people that have that believe in voodoo and witchcraft and all the past and spells and oh, I'm serious. When we used to even here, we used to go and witness that people say, oh, there's some things going on. And we go to different other cities and there's some things going on. But how do you know the devil is a liar? Amen. <laughs> the devil, the blood of Jesus, the devil is a liar. You mean tell me a witch or not have power over God? I don't think so. So you have to know who do you say he is? I'm not talking about your friend that they say or somebody, your neighbor. Who do you say Jesus is? So let's go to, yes sir. Yes, you can. Please. You know, there's, uh, in today's churches, Trinity is very prevalent. And they take God and they split him up into three. Right. He is the Father, He is the Son, and He's the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that those are attributes mm -hmm. of Him, mm -hmm. of being God. But you will find out here that uh, people will still call him the son of God. Some will even say the son of man, you know, but um, they do not want to say that he is God. 
They try to separate the two. So when you're out evangelizing, you're going to run into that, that people want to accept him as being the son, but not accept him as being the total package. Right. Okay. The total package. Amen. Let's go to St. John, chapter 1, verses 1 and 14. We're going to read that together. We just kind of want to tie this in just a little bit. When we say that we really know who Jesus is, there's so many scriptures, but it's just a couple of them that we want to just pull out. You know, even in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, in the beginning, what? God. God. Now, let's read St. John chapter 1, verse 1. And we're going to go skip a little bit. Let's read that together. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning. What? With God. Verse 3. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the life of men. Let's go down to uh, verse 9. Let's read that together. That was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And what? Do you know that still right now the world don't know him now? Right. Even though he wake them up every day, even though he reigned on the just as well as the unjust, even though he showed mercy and they blasphemed his name, even now the world still don't, you need to tell me you still don't know him. The world still don't know who God is. He came and they still don't know in the word. They still don't believe the word of God. They still don't believe in the Bible. They're still atheists. There's still people who bless and cuss his name. How could you not? And if it had not been for him, you would wake up crazy. He still make ways for those who don't even know him. He still bless them with the activity of their limbs and they still don't know him. He still makes sure they eat every day and bless them on their job. And they still don't know him because if he ever decided to take it away, or if he ever decided that they take their last breath, you still don't know him. And you're breathing air every day, inhaling the next time, and you still don't know he's God. Let's go to verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave him power, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of who? God. Verse 14. And the word was made what? Flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten. Of the Father full of what? Grace. Grace. Who, who is he talking about here? Jesus. Uh, can can y'all say that again? Who is he talking about? Jesus. Can y'all say that like y'all really? The be Who was he talking about? Jesus. <laughs> he not talking about nobody else. He talking about himself. He talking about himself. He came into the world. He wrapped himself in flesh. He came down. He didn't want to put himself in the virgin. He knew what? He was still up in heaven. He was still walking in earth. He was still up there walking straight things. He was still walking straight things down. He was still moving things up there. He was still moving things down there. He was still performing miracles up there. He was still performing miracles down there. He was still, he still, you cannot separate him. Yeah. All right, let's go to the Great Commission. Matthew 8, I'm sorry, 28, 18, and 20. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. Amen. Go, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now who is the Father? Jesus. Who is the Son? Jesus. Who is who? Jesus. Jesus. The Holy Ghost. Jesus. Did it say names? No. What does it say? Singular name. Singular name. If I write you a check, I'm not going to put three different names on a check and try to give it to you. That's not going to work. I can call you brother, I can call you man, but your name is what? Thomas. Thomas. Mm -hmm. That's what you answer to, correct? Mm -hmm. 
I could call you sister, daughter, mother, but your name is what? Ladon. That's what you answer to. <laughs> That's what it is with Jesus. His name is what? Jesus. He is what? Jesus. The Father? Mm -hmm. He is what? Uh, he is? Lord. It's called the Godhead. Right. There's only one. Right. Amen. Who is to evangelize? We still in our handouts. Who is to evangelize? Let's go to St. Matthews 4, 18 and 22. If you have it, just say amen. amen. I'd like someone to start reading that. Matthews 4, 18 and 22. You have it? Let's start reading St. Matthews chapter 4, starting at verse 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting their neck into the sea, for they were fishers. Now look at this. Look, 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 at, look at verse 19. Y'all know that, that right in your head is Jesus talking. Everybody know that? Amen. All right. He said, what did he say? Follow me and I will make you what? Fishers of men. What is fishers of men? How are you going to make me a fish of men? What is that? What is that? Evangelism. <laughs> Let me, give me five bucks. What you say? <laughs> get, 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 get off. Get me. Amen. Yeah. That is. He said, I'm going to make you what? Yeah. Fishermen. I mean, you're doing good fishing, but I got another job for you. I got an assignment. I have a mission for you. And then he goes on. And look what they did. Verse 20. And they straightway left their nets and did what? You don't have to follow Jesus. You might not understand where you're going. You might not understand what he's doing. But you have to follow Jesus. And look, verse 21. And going from this, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And what did he do? He called them. Anybody been called by God? Anybody been called by Jesus? Anybody been called out? Anybody been called? He has he called your name? Anybody been called? He'll call you even when you're sleeping. And he'll put it in your spirit. You know he called you. There's a knowing. And it won't shake. You can't shake it. You can't lose. He will call you. And you will have to answer the call one way or another. Either go kicking or screaming or you just go bullying. He brought you. He gives us a choice, amen? Amen. And look what they did in verse 22. And immediately, look what they did. They left their ship and they left their father. How many would be willing to leave their family? I mean, immediately, they just didn't even question. Didn't even say, well, where are we going? Didn't say, well, what you, who are you? Didn't say, what, 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 what be my daddy? Immediately. They left everything. But guess what they did? They gained everything. They didn't really lose anything. 